What's shaking? Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Buy for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. Now, I just came back from Disneyland, you know, the happiest place on earth, and now I'm back with you on the Apple Buy, the second happiest place on earth. So let's get to the show, and yes, we're getting closer to Apple's annual Worldwide Developers Conference that was officially announced from June the 2nd through the 6th this year. The iWatch is still Apple's biggest unknown, but according to Digitimes, three different supply firms have delivered flexible circuit boards that will be integrated into Apple's iWatch and is expected to be released sometime around the August and September timeframe, according to multiple publications. Now, I'm leaning on the earlier side of that timetable. Barclays also chimed in with a report that the iWatch could include a UV light exposure sensor to help people who are prone to sunburning. I'm not because I'm brown. Now, Texas-based Silicon Labs announced the first single-chip digital UV sensors in February, and company NetAtmo showed off their own UV sensing bracelet at CES 2014. But the Barclays article doesn't provide any specific links to Apple's iWatch. It's all speculation, and there has been no sign of any kind that this will be part of Apple's wearable. All right, still not convinced about why you need to buy an iWatch? I'm not either, but Piper Jaffray's spring 2014 teen survey, yes, that's an actual thing, showed that there's fast-growing interest in an iWatch. In October of 2013, only 12% of the roughly 7,500 teen respondents were considering buying a product that doesn't even exist. Well, the recent survey now shows that 17% of those teens would purchase an iWatch if it's priced below $350. So you can bet Apple says, okay, let's just push it to $399. These future spenders are also very iPhone-centric, with 67% of those teens planning to make their iPhone their next smartphone purchase. And you can add in uh, one more teen to that list who's looking forward to that iPhone as well. Especially, guys, if it looks like these latest renderings from another leak schematics by designer Ferry Pachier, those are just juicy. All right, guys, in Apple TV news, a filing from Comcast and Time Warner in their pitch to the FCC for their planned merger spilled some of the beans and referenced Apple's development of their new set-top box. Now, in this filing, they're arguing that this will help them compete with Silicon Valley giants like Google and Apple. So let's for a moment forget how scary a Comcast Time Warner merger would be for consumers and your cable bills. But according to past reports, both companies have been pitched by Apple, and it makes sense that both companies have been sharing their future plans and talks with potential partners like Apple. Now, if the two merge, it would actually make implementing the rumored Apple TV connected to a single cable service a whole lot easier, but waiting for a new Apple TV could even be delayed by the companies not merging yet. But you guys, you're allowing the top two US broadband and cable TV services to merge to get that? Eh -eh. I ain't having that. All right, we now know that the Apple versus Samsung trial round two is going on. Defendant's exhibit number 489245. It's an email from Steve Jobs that he sent to his top execs in 2010, outlining the visions he had for products, including the iPhone and changes to mobile me, and what was also called the Apple TV 2. Jobs referred to it as making it a great must-have accessory for iOS devices, with content partners like NBC, CBS, and HBO, including a possible TV subscription and suggesting apps, a browser, and even a magic wand we like remote that Apple filed a patent for in 2007. Now, we haven't seen many of those things yet, and unofficial reports are still pointing to a new Apple TV in April. Also, we mentioned WWDC earlier in the show, but for the first time ever, Apple has implemented a ticket lottery system because of the demand. Apple has just sent out the notifications telling people who have won a chance to purchase a conference ticket for $15.99. Uh, that's $1,599. But if you didn't win, at least you get this letter of rejection. Also, WWDC has always featured the future of iOS and OS X, and it should be no different. According to 9to5Mac, iOS 8 is codenamed Okomo, and it will retain that same flat and punchy Johnny Ives look and feel to it. The big focus will be moving Apple into the fitness and health tracking world with its health book apps and services that we've mentioned in past episodes, and a major focus to bring its maps up to speed with better mapping data that's more accurate, and its biggest omission, public transit directions. Billboard is also reporting a possible dramatic overhaul of the iTunes Music Store after failing to stop declining music downloads, and a potential on-demand music streaming service that is a no-brainer to me, 
The report says Apple has a radical plan for iTunes, which could lead to a completely different experience in three to five years. And I think most people wouldn't complain about a cleaner and tighter experience compared to the uh, bloated app that does too much these days. All right, guys, let's get to our Apple Byte giveaway. And if you've seen this show, you know I'm a huge fan of Jelly Skins because they keep all of your devices slim while protecting the surfaces from scratching with really killer unique art. And they also have their own line of hard cases as well. So we're going big this time around. I'm giving away six iPhone 5 hard cases and six $20 gift cards good to protect any device from an iPhone, iPad, a Kindle, and even a Samsung phone. That's right, I said the word Samsung on the Apple Byte. So there you go, that's 12 winners. All you guys have to do is email me at the at CNET.com or tweet me at Brian Tong a picture of you with your unprotected phone or device with your sad face or your begging face, and I'll pick my favorite 12 people. Plus, cute kids and house pets will also be allowed, and we'll announce the winners next week. All right, that's gonna do it for this week's show. I'm Brian Tong, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys next time for another bite of the apple.